where we left off on our spot illustration assignment is that I had saved an EPS and I had moved that EPS into a new Photoshop file. Notice how this file says untitled. That's because I went to Photoshop and said file new. And its dimensions are 11 by 14 inches, like minimum 11 by 14 inches at 350 pixels per inch. Then when I brought in my EPS, it comes in as a smart object, which means it won't let me edit it without rasterizing it. I don't want to edit it and I don't want to rasterize it. I want to leave it as clean vector line art. So if I want to change it, I can add effects. And what I was showing you was the default EPS file out of um, Illustrator will be in CMYK format which means it mixes the ink, the black, in a way that matches what a printing press would do. And that is different. That looks like this on the computer screen. This is a 100% CMYK black. And so if you want to show RGB black, which is what the computer is capable of just by turning off all the lights in the computer, you can double click and turn on a layer style with color overlay and just choose the solid black option in the bottom low, bottom left corner. And that's just the difference between RGB black and CMYK black. And it shows us that even if we have a smart object, we can still play with its colors later. And that's going to be called a color hold. But for now, I want to lock my black line art layer. And I want to rename my my background white layer as blank. This is when having a discipline of how you use layers really helps for digital coloring. So blank white is now my background. It's just a solid white rectangle, right? And I'm gonna lock that. So that is my white bread. It's my wonder bread that I'm gonna build my sandwich on. On top of that is my black line art. That is locked. So we don't touch either of the pieces of bread to make a sandwich. Instead, we fill in in between these layers. So the first thing we fill to color is what's called flat color. So I'm going to make a new layer that goes in between these two. I'm going to label it flat. Now to understand digital coloring, I want you to go to our assignments off of our home page. And I want you to have certain slides open whenever you're digital, digitally coloring. So you go to assignments. Scroll down to assignment five and you'll see this link, an exhaustive explanation of digital coloring. These are Google slides I've put together that use examples I've made, examples that past students have made and professional examples to help you understand how things are colored behind a real or implied outline. So that is the definition of digital coloring. So when it comes to the final exam, digital coloring is different than digital painting because digital coloring always is color that is behind a real or implied outline. What do I mean by an implied outline? That means sometimes things are colored with an outline around it right and then the then the outline itself changes color or is sometimes even removed entirely but it was still colored behind a clear outline whereas digital painting which you'll see in the background here is different than the digital coloring of the characters because the the background never has an outline that it's colored behind instead it just has a sketch that it's colored on top of so the difference of the background versus the characters is the difference between digital painting in the background and digital coloring in the characters. All right, how to understand this. So digital coloring is all about first having a clean outline, right? Whether it's done by hand or done in the computer or made a vector or not. 
and then you add flat color and then you add tones to those flat color and then sometimes you even go beyond that when you just do flat color which you'll see right there and then you add tones to it that's called duotone so there are three approaches to digital coloring and it's most basic flat color is the most basic approach that's this step going from line art to flat color then duotone is the next which is just when you take those flat colors and you separate them into lights and darks and then the most the most uh lavish example of coloring is what's called full spectrum and that's when you take the flat color you split it into lights and darks but then you also add complementary colors to it and this will only be done in little bits in digital coloring because it often gets like overdone very quickly but you can see how in full spectrum color which is what this is called there isn't really a clear flat color So for instance, on this guy's yellow shirt, there's also blue and purple and green in the shadows of that yellow shirt. Or on Hellboy's skin here, it's not just red, it's red and orange and pink and yellow and purple in the shadows. It's subtle, but it's there. Or in the skin tones here, how the skin tones have yellow and pink and green in them. That's full spectrum color. And that's about the most you can do with digital coloring behind an outline here we see some other lovely examples this this ship is in reality all one material right but the way it's lit here it has warms and cool colors throughout or batman's gray suit here is not just variations of gray it also has purple and all that stuff all right so that's the most extreme the way you start all of it is with flat color. So this is a nice example of digital coloring, which has had the outline removed, but it's still clearly digital coloring because it was built behind a clean outline. So the first step is to add flat color. What is flat color? Flat color is the base, even one color tone that something is. In flatting, which is the professional example of this, I have a link to a blog which is all about flattened colors for those of you interested in become a, a colorist flatting is the uh the entry level digital coloring job for the print industry and flatting starts by just picking these crazy colors this is what's called a flatting um, swatch selection you pick crazy neon colors and you fill in different things with it. The reason you do that is so that they're easy to select later and replace with more refined color. So that's called flatting. So it almost doesn't matter what colors you fill things in with, just as long as you fill things in with a color that's different than the colors around it. Then there's what's called local flat color or flat local color. Local color is what I recommend we use. And local color means that you pick a color that is the color that the thing is, no matter the lighting condition, right? Charlie Brown's shirt is yellow. It's local flat color is yellow. If you put Charlie Brown in a dark closet, his shirt is still yellow. If you put him on a train track with a bright light shining on him, his shirt is still yellow, right? So that's a local color. Here's another example. For Wonder Woman, who I use as kind of a, a consistent theme because she's got lots of nice primary colors on her. And she has a lasso that has to glow gold, which is a special effect we add later. But anyway her skin has a local color her hair has a local color her boots have a local color right even the gold on her costume has a local color later that is going to be duotoned into different tones within that local color but first we need that flat local color this is an example of 
taking this line art and using flatting a flatting palette with it just to replace that with local color later, right? So why do, does a flatting palette exist? It's so that these are easier to select from each other, even if you decide to actually make them very similar colors in the end. So we're going to go right to this step, and we're going to fill with local flat color. But feel free to be kind of crazy with it if you want. So how do you do that? On our flat color, it can be either flat color or flat local color. And the way we fill that in is we use our, instead of just using a brush, we use our magic wand. And we set the magic wand to be 32 its tolerance, that's its default tolerance, to be contiguous, so it only selects pixels that are touching. And then what do we select from? We select from our black line art layer from our black bread layer that's already locked so for instance this will only work on contained shapes but i've got a lot of contained shapes so i'm going to first click this side of the clock tower with my magic wand and it's going to select it you can see that selection then i can hold down shift and add any other things i want to fill with that same local color but they have to be contained shapes. Meaning they don't have any openings, right? What happens if I try to select something that's an uncontained shape like this? Notice there's a little gap right there. Oh, actually that gap is tiny enough that it, treats it as contained because of its tolerance. That was lucky. But this one is not. That's a nice open gap. So if I add that in, well, then it's going to select and then find a way out to select everything. So I just hit Command Z. I take one step back. OK, now I take that selection. Remember that selections can move between layers? The reason I locked it, and it's a smart layer, is I don't want to accidentally paint onto my line art, right? I want to paint onto the flat local color. And what do I paint it with? This is the foreground color selector. I'm going to use web colors just to keep it really basic to begin with. And I'm just going to pick a color that feels like the brick color of our campus and then just say, OK. And now I'm just going to fill it in. I'm just going to click on any one of those selections. And then I'm going to hit Command D to deselect. Now what's nice is when I turn off the black line art, it shows how each of these is an individual, individually selectable panel. So maybe that works well for the brick. But then I can always just change my mind on the color, like to this pink, and then just click on it with the paintbrush, and it will recolor it. So that's why flatting is so helpful, is that I can easily go in and adjust these color choices. And I can use the millions of colors if I want to, you know, instead of the, just the, the web colors, which limits you to about, I think, 256. Now, choosing colors can be difficult, and we'll get into that. But notice, if I don't select it first, and I try to paint it, it's just going to fill in everything, right? So first get a selection from your line art. And then hold down Shift and just Really select as many of these contained shapes as you can. And if they are truly contained, it doesn't matter what color you fill them in with, you will replace it with the color you want. What does 
kind of mess you up is when you have these open edges. So we'll deal with those once we see what open edges we have.